Hey, Wonder Hussy here, hanging out in fabulous Boron, California. No, not Moron, Boron. Apparently it's named after the trace mineral, Boron, which, come to find out, thanks to Wikipedia, is an essential mineral for bone growth and, oh gosh, I think horm hormone production and all kinds of things. And it's also one of the key elements in borax. Okay, you know borax, the laundry detergent that they used to mine out of Death Valley, hauling it out with these 20 mule teams? Well, you can see they really lean into the whole borax mining history here in Boron. In fact, I'm not sure why they didn't just name the town Borax. All I know is it's a dusty little desert town between Barstow and Bakersfield, and I've driven through it bunches of times on my way to visit my family in the San Francisco Bay Area from where I live in the desert. And today I thought, why not stop and take a look around? Is Boron really just another dismal, dusty little desert town? Or is there more than meets the eye? Let's go find out. Okay, we're coming into the outskirts of Boron, and it really doesn't look like there's a lot going on here. I think there's only about 2,000 people who live in this town, and it's not even a town, I don't think. It's an unincorporated area. Oh my God, look at this. <laughs> it's a fast food stand in a giant barrel, and it looks like it's called The Barrel. Boy, they're really literal with their names around here. I mean, the town is named after the mineral that its existence is basically based on. Oh man, look, here's the grocery store. The Boron Oud Mart. I guess this is what you call one of them there, food deserts. It's probably really hard to get good fresh produce here. Uh, that doesn't look like the greatest market in the world. What do I know? Maybe it's fancier than Whole Foods. Anyway, like I was saying, uh, the town basically owes its existence to this, I guess it's like a giant borax deposit. And you can see they are not shying away from their mining history. Look at this giant friggin' dump truck. Oh, I had to get out of the car for this. This is pretty cool. I'm guessing this is uh, one of the trucks they use out of the old borax mine here in town. Okay, you know how I was saying this town basically owes its existence to this borax deposit? I'm unclear. I know that boron is a mineral that's in borax, but it looked like when I was doing my research that the mine here is mining borax. Anyway, boron, borax, it's a big mine. And they need some big old trucks to haul all that borax out. Uh oh, it sounds like the train's coming. That's right, not only is there a giant borax mine here in Boron, but the railroad tracks run right through the middle of town. Here she comes, the good old Union Pacific. Anyway, wow, look at the size of this dump truck. Number one, the biggest dump truck in the USA. Well, probably not. Oh, darn it, they have the ladder covered over so you can't climb up and look inside the cab. I would love to do that. But look at the size of these tires. Uh, okay, for reference, I'm five foot three, and my head doesn't even go to the top of the rim. Amazing, and look at the size of these chalks they put under to stop the dang thing from rolling away. <laughs> and look at the size of this gas tank. Oh, for that matter, look at all the names of all the people who've come here and signed the old dump truck tire. I guess there's probably not that much to do if you're a kid here in Boron. <laughs> Just a guess. Anyway, like I was saying, they definitely lean into the historical aspect of borax mining here in Boron. They got the 20 Mule Team Cafe, which, oh gosh, I'll bet you there are some good meals in there. Mexican food, pancakes, milkshakes. Unfortunately, it's too early in the day for me to be eating food. Wow, this is, this is downtown Boron, y'all, and it is deader than a doornail. I mean, that's the grocery store. I think the post office is right down the block there. And then this is apparently like the cultural corridor. It looks like there's, looks like there's a couple museums. Let's go check them out. 
Okay, first we have the 20 Mule Team Museum. Shocker, I can't believe they have a museum dedicated to the 20 Mule Team. And looks like there's probably some really cool indoor exhibits, but there's also this huge outdoor area with all kinds of interesting old equipment. Uh, well, if you've ever worked in a borax mine, you might recognize what that is, what it was used for, uh, or this, or this. Oh my God, this thing looks real old. Like wooden, a wooden conveyor belt <laughs> with some kind of foot pedal on the end. Oh, I think, isn't that a, like a hydraulic drill? Like a jack leg drill? I recognize that from, uh, well, where I live, there's a rock with holes just like that. And they used to do a lot of borax mining out where I live, uh, near Shoshone, uh, Eastern Death Valley. So I'll bet you anything, that's what that was. Anyway, the grounds of this museum are full of all kinds of crazy old mining equipment. <laughs> little, two little mules pulling an old wooden wagon. An old mine cart going into a shaft. And it says Rio Tinto. I think Rio Tinto is one of the, if not the biggest mining companies in the world. It's a, I think, multinational conglomerate. And they're actually the ones who operate the borax mine out here. That's right, they're still mining borax here in Boron. I guess that's why they still haven't changed the name of the town. Uh, we're gonna go check that out in a bit, but first let's go see if there's anything cool inside this museum. Oh, here it is. The famous 20 mule team hauling borax from Furnace Creek in Death Valley all the way down to the rail line, which I guess was, oh, the guy who works here just told me. Mojave, that's where they hauled it to. There's this really cool map on the wall showing all the different routes. Sorry about the glare. They would mine the borax way up there in Death Valley and then drag it across these mountains using the 20 mule team. Look, they have this awesome stuffed animal replica of a 20 mule team. Those would have been, those two carts would have been full of, I think he said something like three tons of borax. And then this back thing was full of the water that they needed to feed the mules. Cause look, that's a lot of desert they're going across. And these mules, they gotta drink water to stay alive. And there's 20 of them. So you need quite a bit of water. Actually, the guy who's working here and he didn't want to be on camera, he was, very shy, but a nice looking guy and full of great information. Anyway, he said that there were actually only 18 mules and two draft horses. So when they talk about the 20 mule team, it was actually something of a misnomer. They had two draft horses right in front of the wagons and then 18 mules pulling all that borax to the railroad in big burlap sacks. So anyway, there's a whole little museum back here dedicated to the history of borax mining. If you're into mining, you'd be very interested in this little museum, which is free to come in, by the way. Look at that, here's all these old ID cards from the old borax miners when they used to mine it underground. That's right, they used to dig tunnels to get the borax out. But then I think he said in 1958, they changed it to an open pit mine. Okay, this is the giant borax mine just on the other side of the freeway there, and we're gonna go take a look at it. It's the biggest open pit mine in California and the biggest borax mine in the entire world. I can't wait to go check it out. Yes, I know I'm weird like that. But before we head over there, just a little blaze around this really cute little museum dedicated to the history of this borax mine town. Oh look, the Boron Bobcat cheerleaders. How cute are they? Oh, it looks like in 1993 and 94, they won back-to-back -back varsity football championships right here in Boron. Lots of information and lots of displays about the old 20 mule team, AKA the old 18 mule and two draft horse teams. Oh, and check this out. Remember the movie Aaron Brockovich? Okay, about that little town in the desert that was being poisoned by PG&E, the utility company. Well, I actually made a video all about that little town. It's just a few miles from here, it's called Hinkley. But when they came to film that movie, well, I guess there weren't enough 
buildings left in Higley. I don't know. They filmed the movie right here in Boron. That's right. Julia Roberts was right here in this What's little town. Name? Bye. Thank you. I'm getting you in the background of this, even though you didn't want to be on camera. Man, he was the greatest. That museum was amazing. Thank you, you too. But there's another place next door, right next door to the 20 Mule Team Museum. There's this, I think it's like an aerospace museum. Oh yeah, look, it's the Boron Aerospace Museum. The only downside is it's closed. It's a Saturday, prime museum viewing day, but I guess the guy at the 20 Mule Team Museum said there's only one volunteer who works here and I don't know, she couldn't come in today. That's a problem here. He was telling me, this guy, it's a shame he wouldn't be on camera. He was so nice and he had so much information, but he was telling me times are tough here in Boron ever since they built Highway 58 and it bypassed the town, you know, classic tale as old as time. Just like in that movie Cars when Route 66, or I guess the interstate was built and bypassed Route 66, all those little towns along it kind of just dried up. Well, that's what's happening here. Yeah, that's why this main street is so dried up and lonely. And apparently why they can't find any volunteers to work at this aerospace museum. But we can peek over the fence at all these different aircraft. Look at that, Scooby-Doo. Anybody recognize what that is? Obviously I know next to nothing about aircraft. But if you do know anything about aircraft, like there's lots to look at here, including the big dog. Look at that. Dun da da dun da 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 dun dun. It says Ed on the tail. Either this plane's name was Ed, or maybe it was suffering from ED, having problems with its nose cone. I guess, or I don't know. Isn't that what you call the thing on the front? Anyway, mighty fine specimen of. U.S. military technology right here, sitting in the front yard of this museum on Main Street in Boron, California, right next to Santa's workshop. <laughs> this must be some kind of Christmas display. I mean, maybe they do it up for Christmas here for the kids. I mean, I guess there are kids here. Now, I mean, we saw that, uh, you know, Boron High School. There's a high school here. There's 2,000 people living here, there's families. I mean, yeah, the town's drying up, but apparently there's still people trying to make a life here. Just barely hanging on. Matter of fact, I got some intel that if I drive to the other side of the railroad tracks, that's the bad part of town. Uh, I wanna go check out this open pit borax mine, but I also kinda wanna see the bad part of town. Let's take a quick detour. Oh man, now I kinda feel bad making fun of Boron after talking to that guy in there. It sounds like it's probably a pretty nice place to live. I mean, to hear him talk, property values are pretty low. You got nothing but fresh air, sunshine, and wide open desert. And apparently there's plenty of jobs in this borax mine. Okay, let's go across the railroad tracks. I wanna see how the poor folks in Boron are barely hanging on. And to be honest, it looks like any number of dusty desert towns that I've been to in my travels. You know, folks just getting by, doing what they can, raising their families. Well, I was gonna say mowing their grass, but I guess there really isn't very much grass here. Oh, look at that place, that's cool. Oh, look at this place. Boy, I can't tell you how many years I've wanted to get off the highway and poke around this little town. I don't know why, but there's, it was just something about it fascinates me. So I'm real glad that I finally made the time. You guys recognize any of this stuff from Aaron Brockovich? Remember they said in the museum, they filmed Aaron Brockovich here. So some of these buildings were probably in the movie. Oh, look, here's the gas station. How much is gas? 639 golly how can anybody afford to buy gas here let alone groceries oh that's california for you okay look i don't want to be one of those youtubers who comes into a small town and drives around shooting footage of all the crappy areas making fun of it so i'm gonna drive through a nice part of town to show you how nice living in boron could be. Yeah, there's some pretty nice houses here, plenty of room, 
for all the kids. Oh, look, there's the sheriff. See, of course, I'm in the good part. Yeah, the sheriff lives here. Yeah, you know, look at that big RV, big front yard. I mean, I guess it makes sense that there would be some pretty nice houses here because there's this giant borax mine just over yonder, and well, you know, mining jobs are pretty highly paid. All right, enough driving around. Let's go check out this giant open pit borax mine for ourselves. Okay, wow, this place is a trip. I don't know if you noticed, all the speed limit signs kept changing from like 33 to 17 and a half. I guess they just want you to pay attention and not drive too fast. Uh, then this visitor center is way up on top of a hill. I guess you can look directly into the pit, which I don't know about you, but I can't think of anything I'd rather do on a sunny winter's day than look into a giant pit of borax. Okay, wow. Here we are at the Borax Mine Visitor Center. <laughs> Actually, before I park and go in, I gotta take a picture by this giant tire. According to the sign, this is a 190 ton haul truck tire that came from a Caterpillar 789 haul truck. The height of this tire is 11 foot 8 inches, taller than any recorded human person with a rim size of 4 foot 9. This tire supposedly weighs 6,305 pounds, which is the weight of 16 male gorillas with a normal operating lifespan of 9,000 hours. Wow, these whoever's making the signs out here has a great sense of humor. <laughs> How much fun was that? Okay, let's go inside this visitor center. Holy cow, look at this place. Hi. Thank you. Oh, look, samples of different types of, I guess these are different types of rocks that have boron in them, tin cal, basalt, ulexite, the whole display about mining and the different trucks they use out here, all the different products in your house that might have borax in them, Miyoko grow, ceramics, art glass, oh hey, wine bottle glass. I knew I couldn't live without borax. Oh wow, look at this. A space shuttle tile. This is a tile from the space shuttle, I guess. There's borax in whatever substance they used to make the tiles for the space shuttle. Oh dang, look at the size of this bag of borax. For reference, it's almost as tall as I am. Wow, this is a really cool visitor center. There is more information about borax than you could ever hope to want. Okay, here's the viewing area where we can stare into the biggest open pit mine in California. And I guess it's the second biggest borax mine in the world. I thought it was the biggest, but the woman in the museum there told me it's actually the second biggest, but it's still mighty impressive. Okay, apologies, the wind just kicked up. It got real windy, but holy moly, look at that thing. Look at those terraces. I mean, you can see, I zoom in, you can see vehicles parked on them for scale, like how big that is. The woman in the museum told me this thing is two miles across and a thousand feet deep. And they just keep digging deeper and deeper. I guess the world has an insatiable appetite for borates. Uh, I'm not a chemist or a geologist or any kind of ist, uh, I'm not really sure what borates are. I guess any kind of minerals that boron is found in, so borax being one of them. Uh, this is, I guess this, this pit mine here supplies 30% of all the borates in the entire world. This pit right here, a third of the borates in the entire world. How about that? Right here outside Barstow. Whoever said there's nothing interesting in the desert?
Okay, there's one more really interesting thing to check out before I leave the U.S. Borax Visitor Center. And that is another replica of a 20 mule team, but this one is life size. <laughs> Look at that, life size replica of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eighteen mules and two draft horses. Remember, we learned in the uh, first museum that they weren't all mules, and you can see that this is a very accurate replica because all these animals up front have big mule ears. But the two right in front of the wagon have little short stubby horse's ears. Nothing like attention to detail and historical accuracy. And then they've got, I, I mean, I guess these are replica wagons. Two big wooden wagons that would have been full of borax. And then this water tank on the back, which was just water for the mules to drink. Well, I don't know. The sign says this is one of the original 20 mule team wagon sets used to carry borax out of Death Valley. So maybe it's not even a replica. These are the actual wagons that were used. That's pretty cool. And then one more interesting thing, the teams worked steadily from 1883 to 1888. That's something else I found interesting. The 20 mule teams only operated for five years. Then the railroad put them out of business. Five years. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Pony Express. People think of the Pony Express as this iconic American thing. The Pony Express only operated for, God, I want to say like 18 months. And then the Telegraph put that out of business. Same with this. Telegraph, railroad, technology, now it's AI. Some things never change. Anyway, the wind is really kicking up, so I am going to get back in my car and continue on my way. But I sure have enjoyed my stay here in the fantastically quirky and unexpectedly interesting little town of Boron. Next time you're driving from, oh, say you're coming from Bakersfield, headed to Barstow to see your cousin Lou, well, take a minute and get off the highway and come check out these museums. They are fascinating and the people here are wonderful.